Welcome guys, today we will cover a few types of different materials. So first of all, what are materials? So in, in simple words, uh, materials are textures and colors that you can apply to your meshes inside your scene. And you can do, inside Unreal Engine, you can do many many cool things with these materials. You can add, um, you can make water, wind, have different colors and, and all these things. So I'll be showing you guys these today. So for this example, I'm using the third person template and the starter content. So first, what we will do is, um, inside your content browser, to create a material, you can either go here into add new and choose material, or you can right click in the content browser and select material. So now the first material I make, I will call this M underscore metallic. Now one thing to note is that inside Unreal Engine, this is the um, this is the, the the general format you should be naming your materials in. So M tells you that it's a material because you will have so so many um, so many files and like um, different types of files that it's, it'll be hard to organize. So make sure you guys have a standard. I just use M, which I believe is a standard for Unreal Engine. And then once you've made your material, we'll double click and open this, and you will see this um, this window right here. So inside here, first of all, I will press 1 and left click. Now I have added a, a vector 1 which only has two values, 0 and 1. In this case, I will connect this to base color. Um, so the value of 0 which you can change down here represents black and the value of 1 represents white. So I will change the value to 1 and then leave this here. Now the next thing we add, um, of course since we've made a metallic, we want this to look like a metal. So as you guys can see something here, we have a metallic option right inside this material. Now here I will press 1 again and add a new uh, vector 1 and we'll connect this to metallic. Here 0 um, represents that it's not metallic and 1 represents that it is metallic. Now if we type value up to 1, you guys can see that it looks a bit more metallic like. But still you can tell that it's not really um, reflective, it's not reflecting anything. And that's because we have another value down here called Roughness. Now I'll make a new Vector1 and I'll connect this to our Roughness. Now when I connect this here, when our Roughness goes, uh, our roughness goes down to zero, this material becomes completely reflective. There is no more reference, uh, Roughness and it's fully metallic. So this is how we make our um, metallic ma um, material. Now you guys can adjust these um, the, these values anywhere from 0 to 1, so 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, anything you guys want to get the material to how you guys want it to look. So this is it. And then now the second thing we will do is we will right click on each of our uh, vectors and we will convert to parameter for each of them. And I will explain this as we go along why we are doing this. So for the first one, we'll call this base color, so we know that this is base color. Second one, down here, we'll call this metallic. And the last one, we will call this roughness. Now we can just save this. And then we will minimize. Now to apply a material to your object, this there's a, the, uh, there's a few ways. First thing you can do is you can left click, drag and drop it on your object or your static mesh. Second thing you can do is you can select your material, I mean your um, static mesh down here you can search for it or you can just drag and drop this here or you can you uh, if you have your material selected in your scene you guys can use the arrow key and it will apply the material here. But before we do that we want to do is we want to right click on this and create a material instance. Now a material instance is, um, it reduces the time it takes to uh, for you to edit a material. It's a lot simpler and it's a lot easier for the engine to handle as well. So it has less calculations involved. Now if you double click on this material instance, you guys can, um, I'll make this smaller. So all the names that we labeled are down here. So our base color, our metallic and our roughness. Now for um, you guys can easily change your base color down here. So I'll just leave this at 1. So this allows you to easily change any of your values however you want them to be. So I'll change this back to 0, this back to 1 and then I'll save this. And then same thing if you want to apply your uh, 
material instance, you can just drag and drop or do any of the other ways I have showed you. Now you guys can have as many material instances as you want, but you have to make sure. Um, but however, so if you change one material instance, the other will not change. However, if you do change the parent of all those material instances, that change will be applied to all your material instances. So you have to be careful not to change the main one, because if you are working in a big level and you change everything, it, it will be a lot of work for you. So be careful not to do that. So this was our um, metallic material. Now, of course, um, if you guys don't see any, any of this stuff here, um, if you can't see your, your material and it's completely black, you guys can go into lights in your modes and drag in a skylight, which I have already done. And this should show you your um, material. Now the second thing we'll do is, um, I'll just select these two by shift and then hold alt and left click to drag this forwards. Now the second thing we'll do to this material is, I'll go down here, I'll right click and duplicate this. So I have a M metallic too now. And then I will open this. So in this, instead of using a vector 1, which only gives us the option for um, black or white, I will delete this and I will press 3 and bring in a vector and connect this to our base color. Now if you double click this, you guys have, you guys can choose from, uh, choose from all range of colors. So here I will choose, um, I will just choose like some, maybe like a blue color perhaps, just to show you guys how this works. And I'll right click on this and convert this to parameter, and again, hold this base color. Now we'll save this and minimize. And we will also make a material instance from this. Create material instance. And then I'll just drag and drop these down here. Now once again you guys can easily change your color. But now instead of having just two options. You guys have you guys can choose as many colors as you want. So this is how you guys use a vector 3. Uh, instead of a vector 1. Now I'll just make another copy of this. And now um, I will be I will use a um, Fresnel. So now I'm making my own game, and I am using this effect a lot in my game. And I will show you what this effect does. I really um, I really do like this effect, and I discovered it a few days back. So I'll show you guys. So we'll just go to our main metallic again. I'll just make a duplicate of this and double click to open this. Now of course we want to add our three vector, and we will add another three vector here. So once we have these two, move this away. We'll right click and search for a Fresnel, so F-R-E-S-N-E-L. And then we will add a Lerp. I don't want to get into um, definitions of these things too much, I just want to show you guys what these do right now. So we'll connect the uh, first vector 3 into A, second into B, and the Fresnel into the Alpha. And we'll connect this Lerp into our base color. Now we will add another one vector right here and connect this to the, to the Expo. On the on the funnel. Now we'll con uh, convert all our vectors to parameters, and we'll name them um, appropriately. For the first one, I'll call this color one, and then color two, and for this one, I'll just call this expo. You guys can name it however you want, as long as you guys know which setting will change which thing. Now, when I save this, and then minimize. Now again, I'll create another material instance from this, and I'll drag this onto this um, this prop right here. Obviously, I'm using these props um, from the starter content inside props. Now, when we open this, I'll make this smaller so you guys can see. I'll close the older ones we've been working on. Now we can choose two colors. So first, I'll choose a blue, or I'll choose a yellow, and then I'll choose a red. Let's say. So now, first thing you'll notice is our lerp. So if you go back to our main material, uh, metallic three. So our lerp right now, um, the two two materials we have cho uh, chosen here are just being mixed together to produce this result right here. But we want to use this some um, Fresnel option right here. So for this, we'll just go to our material instance. We'll go to Expo, and I'll turn this up slightly. Now, if you guys notice, we have a blend between these two materials right here. And we have so now um now this gives us a really really nice metallic look. So now if you look from one side, um it looks different. If you look from the other side, it looks different. So this is a really really cool effect you guys can use inside your thing. You can of course change the color to anything you want. 
both of the colors and for this I will use a green and a blue to show you exactly what this does. Okay so now once we've done this next effect I'll show you guys is making a stylized. Of course uh, before I move on the um, the expo on this so um, a higher value would mean that only one color shows up and a lower value will make a blend between the two. So next thing I'm also using this inside my game and I will call this um, stylized. So let's make another copy of this. Um, alt and make another copy and then drag this down here. So now to make a stylized look I will leave this just like this. So I'll just close this, close this and now I'll make a duplicate of our M metallic 3 that we just made. Now once we've made a duplicate of this, I'll double click to open this. Now inside here, literally all I will do is I will turn the metallic value. Or before I do that, I will just leave this and uh, for a metallic form that we just made, I'll just create a material instance. And I'll drag and drop this right here. Now we'll open this up and all we'll do down here is of course choose any colors that we want, any two colors. Just choose a blue again and a green. Or actually I'll choose a yellow for the first one. Alright, okay. So now once you've done that, we'll just turn our expo, on, um, expo up, maybe 0.2 or 0.3, however you guys want to use it. And then we will just turn our metallic down to 0 and our reference uh, roughness down to, I mean, up to 1. And now you have a nice stylized look. Now if you, now the, the um, yellow color that we have, or the second color, will, will kind of follow your um, camera around. So this gives you a nice um, stylized look which I'm also using in my game. I'm, I'm quite a bit. So this is it. And now the next thing I will show you guys is how to add a normal map. Now normal map adds, um, it's, it's still a 2D texture, but a normal map adds a fake depth to it. So it looks like it's, um, I'll just show you what it, what it does rather than going on and on about it. So well, let's go back to my main metallic, the first one and duplicate this. And of course, you guys should always remember to make material instances. It's a really good practice and always name your things nicely and organize them inside folders. So let's make another copy of this. And this time in our material uh, and metallic 5, we'll make a instance for it again, material instance. And I'll drag this down here. Now to add a normal map, I'll just double click and open this and I'll press T and left click. Now um, I'll be using the texture from the starter content. So we'll just connect this to our normal. And down here, I'll just type rock. So T, uh, T detail rocky N. This is the one I will use. You guys can find it inside your um, starter um, contents. Now if I click apply on this, you guys can see that we have a depth to this. And now you can see that um, I just used the rock one. So this looks like a metallic rock now. So instead of this, what I'll do is um, in the material instance, I'll just uh, leave the base color at one. For metallic I'll do 0 and for roughness I'll do 1 and voila guess what we have we have a snow texture so just from using a starter content and making a few materials you guys have just made yourself some snow texture so this is how you guys do that and now we will move on to the next type of material all right guys the next thing we'll look at is this material right here these three so this is a um, translucent, kind of see-through looking um, glass materials. Now I should mention this um, in in the uh, when I showed you these materials, my quality settings were at low, and I just realized this right now, so I've just turned them up to epic. So this is what your material should look like in epic settings, and those were at the lower settings, so you guys couldn't see um, see any of the good um, reflections and stuff. So anyways, let's get on with the second material. Now then, for the second material, I'll actually make a new folder down here. So I'll make a new folder, I click new folder and I'll call this glass. Just to be organized. I don't want to get confused in the middle of things. Okay, now we'll make a new material here. And we'll call this M underscore glass. Now we'll open this. And inside here, first of all, we'll add a three vector. Of course, we'll convert this to parameter already and, call and type base color. Now, next thing we add is um, actually we'll select this and change the blend mode to translucent. And translucent, of course, means see-through. 
You guys can also down here change the uh, lighting mode to surface translucency volume, which can be quite helpful if I change the color to white here. Just can kind of see. But I'll, for this um, example, I'll just leave it back to. I guess I'll just leave it at um, translucency volume now. Okay, so now we will add a one vector. We'll press one and left click, and we'll connect this to our opacity. And we'll convert this to a parameter. And down here, I'll type opacity. Once you've done that, I'll change this to something like 0.5. Now the next thing we'll add here is a um is a lerp. So press L and left click here, and we'll connect this to our refraction. And then I'll add two vector ones. So the top one, I'll just um, of course convert these two parameters. Top one, I'll just call A. As long as you know what they mean, and the second one I'll just call B. So A I'll connect to A, and B I'll connect to B. For the first one, I'll change the value to 1. For the second one, I'll change the value to 1.5. Now down here, I'll type Fresnel again, um, and I'll connect this to Alpha. And of course, I'll add another vector um, 1 here, and I'll connect this to our Expo. And this I'll convert to parameter and call this expo. And the value I'll put something like 0 0.2. We can always change this later. Now our glass grass material is ready, so we'll save this and we'll minimize. Okay, now we want to create a right click and create material instance, and we want to just drag this on here. And you guys can already see that we can see through this and it looks like it looks kind of like glass but to make it even better I'll go down here I'll uh, I'll change the base color down to about um I'll change this base color somewhere between white to black wherever you guys like it and now this looks pretty good and we also have a kind of a glassy um uh, re refraction where um it's not exactly that clear the um, re reflections and stuff so this is how you make the basic glass now of course I won't go over each and every one I showed you guys there because um, you guys can use the same tactics from here and then apply them to, to your glass and you guys will have the same effects on your glass have multiple colors use a um, panel with your base color however you guys want to use it so you guys can do this and just to tell you guys any effects I use here, you guys can use them um, between materials. So make all different cool uh, cool stuff using um, different types of materials. And now um, the next material I will look at is this. So in this I am using the um, uh, starter content to make a simple water material. And then of course I'll, I won't actually show you these again because uh, you guys can use the same methods that, as I showed you in in the first one down here. So you can have nice translucent looking water by adding um, uh, changing the blend mode to translucent and the lighting mode to surface translucency. And then you guys will have this and of course turning the um, opacity down or adding um, refraction however you guys want to. And you guys can um, turn off metallic, take off any um, opacity and um, make it um, opaque the blending mode and put the, put the roughness up and you'll have a kind of a stylized water look and down here you guys will have a um, kind of metallic look to your water if you guys um, t turn the metallic up and turn the roughness down so I'll show you how to make the basic water so for this of course I'll go back to my um, main one and I'll add here new folder and I'll call this water now in this um, I'll just make a new material down here and I'll call this M underscore water. Now I'll double click this and I'll add a 3 vector again. And I'll connect this to my base color. I'll convert this to parameter and call this uh, base color. Now next thing we do is um, <coughs> I'll press T and left click here. And I'll, um, so now what I'll do is I'll go down here and I'll type water. And I'll use the T water N. Now this is the texture that comes with the starter content. So you guys should be able to find it here if you guys do have the starter content in your thing. 
I'll select this, I'll control C and take my mouse here and control V. Now we have three of these. And then I'll select both of these. And now I'll add a down here right click and I'll type Pana. And I'll duplicate this as well. So I'll connect one down here to the UV and connect one up here to the UV. And for the first one, I'll change the values to 0.2 and 0.3. Second one, I'll change the values to minus 0.2 and minus 0.3. Now what, what Pana does is, Pana basically makes your texture go across the um, coordinates that you choose X or Y here. So, um, so this will make our, uh, so this will make the top water, so one, one water move towards one direction and the other water move opposite that, that um, um, direction. Now I'll add a um, lerp down here, so I'll just press L and I'll add a lerp. And I'll connect the first texture to A and the second texture to B. And I'll connect this into a normal. Now if you guys notice, you guys can see that we can see um, moving water down here. And of course you guys can press you and left click here, you guys can connect this here and make, make another copy and connect this here. And this will, um, this will control how, um, how much you want your texture to, to tile. So if you have a massive C, you can turn this down to maybe like 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and then they, they, uh, they won't be as much tiling when you look um, look at, at it from far away but if you have a really really small surface you can turn this to maybe 5 and 5 and then you will have a lot of tiling done with your texture so anyways once you've done this and once you're happy with this you can just click apply I'll just save this and then I'll just minimize this now I'll just drag uh, I'll of course make a new material instance and I'll drag the material instance down here now you can see that we have water that's actually moving around as well. So we have one texture moving this way and the other texture moving this way in the normal maps we added inside. And of course you guys can change your, your base color right here. So make it look like water. That's how water normally looks, something like this. And this is your basic water. And of course you guys can add, add uh, metallic or make them translucent water using the same method we did here. But add the um, normal map um, instead of make stylus water making it um completely uh making it, it um completely uh turn, turning the reference completely up and turning the metallic down so this is how you guys make water and then now we will move on to our next texture down here okay so now i'll look at these um these materials down here and this is an emissive material so this is really simple and of course you guys can do the same stuff um, making it translucent or using AM funnel to give it a nice um, nice effect on the um, edges. So I'll just get on with it straight away. Now um, down here of course uh, we'll make a new folder which I have already done so I'll delete these two materials. And down here uh, you make a new folder called emissive and make a new material. I'll call this M underscore emissive. Now we'll open this and bring in a 3 vector and here instead of connecting this 3 vector to a base color we'll connect this to the emissive color and I'll convert this to parameter and I'll call this emissive and I'll just save this now I'll create a material instance from this and I'll drag this onto here now right now you can't tell too much of a difference, but when I open this and I'll make this smaller, I'll check the box here and I'll choose like a bright color and now you guys can instantly see that this is more bright than, than normal. Now let's say you want it to be even more bright than this, you want it to be even more emissive, even more shiny. So what we do for this is you just turn this value, now the normal value is from 0 to 1, these three values, blue, green and red, but if you turn this value up, so if you say 2, you can see that the material gets bright. If you say like 10, the material is really glowing. It's really, really, really bright. But um, I'll just turn this down for you guys. So, so when we do the next material, you guys don't have to see this really bright uh, material down here. So this is how you make a, um, an animated material. And of course, you guys can use the same method um, as we did before. Making the glass setting a refraction, um, opacity, or normal map, or anything you want. So this is how you guys will make animated material. Now we'll go to our next material down here, which as you guys can see, it's kind of um, it kind of glows for a bit and then it goes back to normal. So for this material, I'll go back and I'll show you exactly how I've done this. 
So for this material, I'll just make this right here. I'll just call this, I'll make a new material and call this M underscore sign. Okay, now when I open this, so again, we'll uh, add a three vector here and I'll connect this to our emissive color and I'll um, make it something like a blue maybe. And I'll turn the value up a bit, maybe two or maybe five, something like this. And I'll convert this to parameter and call this base color. Now we'll right click and add sign. Now if you know if we had um, um, it, in the water, we had a pan and the pan made the texture move from one side to the other and it's, it's kind of looping so it keeps moving. What the sign does is um, sign kind of makes it glow and then go back and this this uh, value right here tells us um, how much it, it will glow or the, the time limit between each glow. So right here we will we'll type time, right click time and enter, we'll connect this time to our sign. we we'll connect this sign to our base color and instantly you can see that we have a shine to our, um, to our color right here. Now it's showing a of white because I haven't actually set any textures or any colors down here. But this is fine for this example. I will save this and I'll minimize. Now when I minimize this I'll create a material instance and I'll drag this on here. And as you can see we have a material that shines and then goes back. So this is as simple as that. And once again I'll mention this again. You guys can use any of the older tactics on this. So, so just, just remember any materials I show you here. You guys can combine them together, make cool effects, make new materials and be free. You, uh, you're an artist, just do whatever you want. Okay, so this is how you guys make these sign materials. Now right here again, we'll make a new material. I'll call this M underscore rotate, uh, rotator. And for this, I'll double click this. And for this example, I'll use a texture. So I'll press T, left click here, and I'll connect this texture to our base color. And down here, I'll just choose um, some nice texture so something like um something that you can see when it, uh, when it moves something like this um these um stones these stone and um and um pebbles yep so this should be a good example now it's really simple i'll just right click here type rotate and then here it is you connect this to the uv and you have a texture that's literally rotating around um kind of kind of um in a circle you guys can use this as well in uh, many different things and of course you guys can change the value, the speed up here if I turn this up to 0.5 it goes faster if I turn this um, center to 0.1 maybe. You guys can see that the center has changed now and it's kind of going different. So you guys can play around with all these values and of course once again uh, for this making a material instance you don't have anything to edit but still uh, material instance should help you, um, help your engine or your game run faster or more smoother. So this is how we make that and then I'll just um, make another copy to show you the next example. Now uh, if you go back here, the next example I'll show you guys is um, I'll be using the bush from inside the starter content to show you this example. Now um, I guess I'll just get on with it and I'll explain it while I'm doing this. So now I'll just go back to our uh, our tutorial and I'll, um, I'll make a new folder and I'll call this m underscore masked. Now I'll open this. Now I'll make a new material. I'll call this M underscore mass. And the last one I wasn't supposed to call it M. I was just supposed to call it mass, but it doesn't matter. Let's call it M underscore mass and I'll open this. Now for this we need a texture. So I'll press T here. And down here, if you guys do have the starter content, it should show up for you guys. So if I go to bush and I'll choose the first bush T bush T down here. Now if you connect this to the base color, you guys can see that um, we have a texture but it doesn't have a transparent background. And this texture, I understand, is a PNG file dot PNG. Uh, so PNG file is useful if you guys use any any software like GIMP or uh, Photoshop. You guys can um, export, if you guys remove the background color, so if you guys remove this color right here, and you guys export it as a PNG, it will keep that detail stored. And now we need to tell Unreal Engine about that detail. So that detail is our, is in our alpha channel. So we need to connect our alpha channel to our opacity, but nothing's happening right now. So we need to select this M mast and we need to go down to our blend mode and change this to mast. Now as soon as you've done that, all of a sudden you guys have some branches down here. Now this this uh, this technique is used a lot with um doing your um doing your plants and your trees and, and like all 
all the cool stuff and you guys can of course use this to um, make text so if you guys want text to be on top of a material you guys can choose the opacity mask and lerp together different colors and everything and then you guys can have a texture with the text on it which you will always need to bring in from GIMP or uh, Photoshop or something so once you've done that I'll just make the material two-sided which is normally useful for plants and I'll save this And now of course again um, I'm only making material ins instances so, so you guys remember since it's a good practice. Now when I drag this here you guys can see that we have a see-through material. And of course uh, the, um, the, the tiling depends on how you UV unwrap your thing so inside your 3D modeling software however you UV unwrap this this is the type of tiling um, you guys will have. Now the next thing I'll show is um, so I'll just make a new copy of this drag this here now I'll go back and down here next thing I'll show you is adding wind um, adding wind so adding wind to these two so I have two types of wind down here there's three different types of winds you guys can use but for this example I'll just use these two which you can do inside Unreal Engine without having to go outside the so first wind just gives it kind of like a shaky shaky look and the second wind kind of gives it like a nice smooth like going through wind so I'll show you how um, I've done both of these now if I go back here I'll just duplicate this M mask right here, duplicate this and I'll make a material instance from this and I'll drag this instance, the second instance down here. Now I'll open the M mask too and now the value we'll use for this, the node we'll use for this is world position offset. So I'll right click here and I'll type sign and I'll type panel, both of which we are familiar with because we have used them uh, recently. Now I'll connect the sign and the panner into world position offset. I'll change this to maybe 1 and change this to 3. You can choose any value, just play around this value to get the right wind for you. You can see that we have some movements. Now this sign, I turn this down to let's say 0.2, will kind of like um, determine how much that wind, wind affects or how quickly that wind, wind affects. So if I turn this down to like maybe 5, let's say, you can see that there's a, there's a huge delay between each wind, wind cycle. So you can play on these values. I'll just leave it at 0.5 maybe. And when I play, uh, when I save this and minimize this, you guys can see that we have some wind down here. Now then, for the next um, for the next type of wind, and now this is obviously everything you can do inside a uh, Unreal Engine, which is really useful. So for the next type of wind, I'll make another copy of this. Um, this M must. And I'll create a material instance. I'll drag this material instance 3 on this and this. Now if we open this material insert the mast one, the main mast material and we'll right click here and I'll type simple grass wind. Now I don't want this to get too complicated for you guys but we'll connect this to world position offset but if you double click this you guys can see that they have already done all the um, blueprinting for us so the Unreal staff has already done the, the hard work for us and we have this option right here so anyways let's close this we'll go back to this and so this thing uh, contained all that coding inside it so now for this I'll just add a value so I'll just press 1 you can have um, uh, so I'll, 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 I just pressed 1 and then left click you guys can have as many of these as you want for um, each, each of them have different values but I'll just use the same value for all of them. So down here, I'll just type, let's say if I type 1, you guys can see how crazy of an effect this will have. You have some crazy wind right here right now. I'll convert this to a parameter. And I'll type here just wind because this will change how fast or how slow our wind is. Now when I save this. And I'll just minimize this. Now you can see that we have a crazy amount of wind down here. And this is so crazy that it's actually going below the floor down here. So obviously you can go into the material instance and change the wind value. So if I turn this down, you can see that our wind is kind of stable now. And you guys can use this. And the last one, um, the last wind type you guys will, um, if you guys want to learn about that, you guys can watch uh, one of my videos. Or, or you guys can watch the um, Blender Beginners tutorial and I, I cover quite a lot of stuff in that. And then because I use uh, Blender for, as my 3D modeling software, so yeah guys, so this is how you make all of these materials. I hope you guys found this useful. Um, I will be doing more series and I'm, I apologize, I haven't done a video in a long time. So this 
has been um, quite a long time since I've done this video and I'll also be making my own game so if you guys want to keep up with that I'll be making a different playlist for that and I'm um, doing anything um, any any cool things or or updates on my video game as I make it so this was the uh, the basic materials um, tutorials for the beginners inside Unreal Engine after this I will plan something new and I will show you guys something perhaps blueprints or um, particle effects or anything if you guys would like to see something specific, leave it in the comments. Now, I do want to tell you guys, I'm not um, I'm not good with everything. For example, uh, animations. I haven't done much on animations because my game character doesn't use many animations. This is a simple game character that kind of flies. So, um, there, there are specific things I cannot do. But if you guys would like to see um, basic tutorials on different things, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll let you know if I am able to do those. So this was it guys, you guys can obviously make cool materials, be on your way to using cool materials inside your game and remember this thing, if you guys want to get really nice looking lighting inside your game and you can't do it, just, just remember that you can change your materials and, your, and how your lighting affects your world will also change. So you guys need to always play around with things, make different materials, mix them together until you are happy with the result. So this is it for now guys, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.